So I seen a picture today, and I want you to actually take a screenshot of this, show it to the people that you live with, and ask them if they believe it or if they remember the time. Now, let's check it out. It says this right here. In 1970, the cost of living, a new house, 23000 for a whole home family. I'm talking about you getting into a new house. They're saying the average income, $9,400. They're saying a new car, $3,400. Now, this came across my timeline. I want you to go and actually, again, ask somebody if they remember these times or some of these prices at all, even if it's just one. Now, why is this crazy to me? Because we're living in a world where inflation is totally the norm, right? You expect dollars to be less valuable in the future. Why is that? So people are willing to spend them, right? Make a lot of sense. But you know what? Let's get to some of the facts and some of the receipts. So let's take a look at this, right? When you compare the price of a new home, back then, they're saying it was $23,000. What is it today, family? Price of a new home, according to CBS, is $400,000. Yes, hold up. $400,000. Do you see how crazy of a difference that that is? From $23,000 all the way to $400,000. Now, this is just in... There's decades, right? Let's be clear. Decades, right? But 50 years, such a crazy difference like that. And again, there are people from back then who totally remember these times. And again, I want you to go and ask them yourself. So now let's check this out. They're saying this, that the average salary in the U.S. today is 53000 which is basically $1,000 per week. You could think of it just like that. Now, I bring that up to say, okay, the average income was 9400 and imagine having an income like this and your income is basically half of what your house is worth just about so $9400 in the $23000 house now hold up when you look at the average income and the average house how are people supposed to afford anything nowadays now what's going on here this is telling us that we have to grow our money. And if we don't grow our money, then we're just going to become broker and broker and broker over time. This is why they're telling you that the middle class is disappearing, family. This is why you're seeing so many different things. And you ask yourself, what is the government doing in times like this? Now, this is something that I've seen that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I'm going to show it to you right here, right now. Check it out. The president of Ukraine says that they need more than a trillion dollars to rebuild Ukraine after what happened. Now, I'm not here to say that they should get it or they should not get it, right? Let the people be the judge of that. I'm not going to say that. But what I am going to say is, what is your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. But I want you to remember that the United States has been sending a lot of this money to them. And I'm not saying that they should stop. Again, you be the judge on this. But I do want you to see how you can't be like the American government you got to be better at managing money than them. And to be honest with you, it ain't that hard. Let's take a look. We got this. It says, what is the national debt today? Family, it's over $31 trillion, a.k.a. about $94,000 per person. This is astronomical. And this is literally information pulled up and sourced today. Let's put that into some context. Check this out. It's saying that back when George Bush was the president, early 2001, September, they're saying that it was 3.3 trillion, right? 2020, or not even 2021. If I said that, hold up. 2001, right? Near September 11th, they're saying we were at 3 trillion. But then by the end of 2008, it more than doubled at 6.3 trillion, family. Now, how the heck did we get all the way up to 31 trillion? Oh, the federal government has been pumping things into the market. What kind of things? Just dollars that aren't backed by gold. So then we start to see things like this start to look crazy. Absolutely nuts. We see bread. It used to be 25 cents according to this. It, eggs used to be 59 cents. Coffee, a dollar. You might still be able to get, oh, you know what? It says a pound of coffee, right? Where you're going to make it yourself. You might still be able to get that. You let me know in the comments. Now, milk, 62 cents a gallon. Sugar, 39 cents for five pounds. A stamp, six cents. Gasoline, 36 cents. Hold up. That's nuts. Family, that's absolutely crazy. I can hardly even believe it myself. And for comparison, let's look at some other prices. The minimum wage now is $7.25 on a federal level. Now, when you go to different states, you're going to see that states have their own say on that. But on a federal level, that's what it is. But back 
50 years ago, it's saying that the minimum wage was $2. Family, minimum wage, $2 then and now. But think about how comparable that was to what things used to cost, right? Now, compared to today's minimum wage, family people is hurting. The people who could be considered poor and the people who could be considered middle class, they're absolutely getting smoked. So now they're saying this, and this kind of shocked me looking this up today, that gas prices, and it's so volatile, that gas prices is down to 2.99, right? Almost $3, and it keeps plunging. Understand, the politicians are not letting gas prices work by supply and demand, how it will move naturally. They're trying to artificially give us these prices so that we try to keep them in office. Some people like that. Some people rather it be let how it's supposed to be. You be the judge. I won't tell you what to think about that. But this episode is brought to you by the Moomoo Investing app. I want to tell you this in case you don't have an investing app. I like to use Moomoo and what you'll get is free stocks, right? You'll get up to a 60 thousand dollar sweepstakes and you'll get it one ticket if you deposit you can just screenshot this and see everything over here you deposit a hundred dollars you're going to get four stocks so on and so forth right but understand if you're not investing now what's going to happen is all of the money that you are trying to accumulate in like a savings account for example and let's be clear cash cash is king right especially in a recession so you do want to cash up but you want to be able to grow your money. You don't just want to have it just sitting. So what you want to do is you actually want to invest. And if you're going to use a platform, you might as well get the most bang for your buck. So then I say, you know what? I like Moomoo for that. So now I do want to show you this. And we're going to talk about some more things. The FOMC meeting, the federal meeting, where they are trying to control inflation because the reason that all of those prices from earlier seem so crazy is because of inflation. The price of things has inflated like a balloon. And oftentimes we just waiting for that balloon to pop. But the prices of things have just inflated so drastically that the government is trying to heighten the interest rates on everything to make it so people spend money a lot less than they were. Right. They want to get that demand of things just to come down drastically. Now, let's look at this. Fed, according to Reuters, the feds are going to start slowing down these rate hikes. So. This is largely a good thing for the stock market. However, we know, and let's keep it real, it's a delicate balance that they have to play here. If they were to slow down too soon or too much or speed up with the rate hikes too much too soon, then we could go at either extreme. Inflation is running back up or we get to a point where, you know what, they crash the stock market down. So they have to play it with balance. We don't want them to move too fast in either direction. So we got to keep our eyes out on that. And the next time that we're going to see it, is December 14th. Mark that on your calendar if you have not done so already. You got to be informational and not emotional. So now, check this out. What they're trying to do is get inflation and restore balance, they're calling it, back to 2%. So every single year, they want things and the price of things to inflate just a little bit, right? 2%, that's natural. This is why things way back in the past are the price that they were and then things today are the price that they are. So understand, that's okay. But guess what's not okay? When inflation is 7.7%, 8%, the highest it's been in 40 years. So this means you're not just losing just 2% of value on all of your money. Let's say you had $100 one year, and then next year you would have basically $2 less in buying power on that same $100. But now with inflation up in the sevens and in the eights, you have between seven and eight dollars less in buying power on a hundred dollar bill than you would have had the previous year so what we got to do family we have to learn to grow our money to manage it better than we have in the past because again people are gonna get just destroyed through inflation being ridiculous i had went to the grocery store not too long ago right this might have been a week and listen i just pick up some cauliflower family just a straight up just regular old cauliflower and I'm thinking, okay, it's probably going to be expensive. Maybe it'd be like $4. It was $8, $8 for just some cauliflower. What's going on here, family? Inflation, the powers that be, the people that are supposed to protect us, what are they worried about? Sending money away. And also, guess what? Not you. That's the simple story of the family. Straight up, they're not worried about us. So what I want you to do is this. I want you to take a look. Let me actually fix this. I'm zooming myself in, which I don't mean to be doing. I want you to take a look at this and I want you to screenshot it if you have not done so already, because many people who've been rocking me for a long time, you've seen this right now. This is how I think not financial advice, but how I think you should 
really manage your portfolio. And I've been talking about this all year. And if you're playing options, don't play it too heavy on your portfolio. I'll be trading options most likely tomorrow morning. So if you want to join the Discord, you can join the classes and go and learn how to do that. But I want you to keep some cash, 5% on a minimum. Treat yourself like a business. And if you're getting into swing trades or short squeeze kind of plays, and those who've been rocking with me for a long time, and you remember seeing this because we've been talking about this for a long time, even before this recession or pullback that we've been in, so we could have a strong foundation. Now, your swing trades, 10% max, max. Don't even always try to get to the to the most extreme, right? And this is my opinion. You go and do your own research. Individual stocks, right? Like Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, anything like that, right? We want to keep those, I say, in my opinion, 20% of your portfolio, your foundation, VTI, or something like that, a broad market ETF or index fund, for example. This is why I always tell you, if you can't handle the heat, consider investing in index funds because the only reason you can't handle the heat is because you over leverage yourself and you got to be responsible so that you can make money long term and then you want to be a better manager of money than the united states has been showing us that we got 31 trillion dollars in debt and then we're considering sending more money over now again i'm not saying that they should or they shouldn't but i just want you to just understand that you have to be a solid manager of your money and you can't just do anything with it because you will destroy the people that matter most or most in the united states that's <laughs> the people that matter most to the government should be the citizens in your own home the people that matter most should be the people that live in their family and you know what love thy neighbor too but we're not gonna go there i love y'all i appreciate y'all and what i want you to do is invest in yourself so that you could have a future where you could afford things in the future because understand these rates that we're getting right now on inflation and everything is up in 10 years, they're going to be even more expensive, family. They're going to be even more expensive than they are. It's just the way that it goes. And I don't see the United States, to be honest with you, as someone who's all of a sudden going to start managing money better and paying down that debt in high amounts. So make sure that you're protecting yourself and you're protecting your wealth. I love y'all. I see you on the live trading tomorrow on the Discord. If you can't do the heat of these hot stocks and stay out of the kitchen, consider investing in index funds. Again, see you in the next one. Take care and send this video to somebody who needs this put into perspective. You understand me? Because I feel like, to be honest, most people need to see, yo, what's really going on in the broad market? You know what I'm saying? What's really going on? Why do we invest? Why do we need to invest? So we can say, hey, you know what? One day we're going to be older and we're going to need to be able to afford the things that we're buying. But again, I ain't going to drag this one out too long. I love y'all. See you in the next one. Take care.